fun book to share with because it's almost as though when we hear the expression that David was a man after God's own heart, I always thought of it different than most people, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they think of it the same way I do. You know, you never know because there's always someone else that's just like you and just like me. Although, I don't know, but it's possible. But when God allowed us to understand David as being a man after his own heart, I always thought of it as being David was pursuing God's heart to become like God. You know, not that David had a heart like God, but that he was in pursuit of it. He was after it. He was going after it. He wanted to be like God because he saw how God dealt, you know, in ways that blew his mind and how he was amazed by the heart of God, which was love. And so I kind of lots of times approach Psalms a little bit differently. I often in these evotionals share saying that this is the type and time where God wants to sit down with us and to express himself to us so that we be prepared for him to work in us throughout our day so that we could go forward knowing that he is the one who is guiding us and abiding with us so in psalm 2 psalm 3 lord <laughs> what a great way to start lord how are they increased that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many there be which say of my soul there is no help for him in god but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hills. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessings is upon thy people. You know, as God works in us and through us, we see about us numerous people that will be against us, that oftentimes, for no reason at all, you may find yourself in a perplexing situation and circumstance where people would look at you and say, ha ha, now what are you going to do? And you see, there's a choice for you to make at that moment in time when people are pointing their finger at you and they're saying, what are you going to do? How are you going to get out of it? What's going to happen? What they're saying is, you said you were a Christian. You said you had God with you. What will your God do now? Even as he said, there is no help in God. But you know, and I know, and by our experience of walking with God and talking with Him and being in constant fellowship with Him throughout our day that whether God deliver us or not, God is still God. That we still know we have a shield that is covering us and protecting us from the onslaught of what could have been. And God has only allowed a certain portion of it to filter through His fingers, as it were, to what is happening to you now in your life as people around you may be accusing and saying that you have no hope except that you cry out to God and you know that's where you should be is that the psalm directs us exactly where we ought to be we know we have God we're aware of the circumstances around us so they're forcing us to do one thing and that points us directly to God I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and that's what we know we ought to do in every circumstance and situation, is to cry out to God, not to deliverance from a friend, or a neighbor, or the government, or some other situation or circumstance where we say, oh, but they take care of this situation. First cry out to God so he can direct you, because he has said, I will direct you. Not cry out to God and then go and be belligerent and don't accept help from others, but cry out to God so that God can tell you to accept the help from others. Do you see how that works? God first, then he directs you to the people. 
and you accept that from him and his hand as he has provided those people for you, not directly go to them and then ignore that God is directing you. When you know that you can cry out to God in that way, and you can know that God has heard you as we know that God answers all prayer because you've constantly been in fellowship with him, then you can rest. You can trust. You can lay down and sleep. Because of why? Because the Lord before has taken you and never caused you to suffer greater than you were able, but will with whatever trial or tribulation you went through provided a way of escape that you were able to bear it. So you can say with David that the Lord sustained you and kept you, and you were able to sleep and get a good night's sleep on it. So whenever you find yourself really out of whack and out of kilter, seek the Lord. When they're pointing fingers at you, sleep on it. Trust in Him. Wait on Him. Look to Him. Then exercise, as it were, your faith, because you know that you don't need to fear those that are trying to provoke you into some action or course of direction that you know you should not go. Because you have cried out to God, and with your whole heart you have simply said, God, save me, help, I'm in need. And when you look about, and if you wait long enough, patiently, enduring that tribulation you're going through, then you will see that all those, every single one of them that were naysayers against you, and pointing the finger and saying, where is your God? You will see every one of them smitten, struck as it were, turn their cheeks to the left and the right, as though God were slapping them because they will no longer be focused on you when the answer is there, when salvation has come, because they will have nothing to say. They will be as though they had been broken teeth, that they were not able to gnash on you and to chew you up and spit you out in little pieces because they have no teeth. There is nothing to their accusations at all. It has no merit. If you have trusted in the Lord and cried out to Him for salvation and rested in Him, and watched and seen how he delivers you from them. Because salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Remember that. It's not salvation from man. It's not salvation from your own consequences of your actions. But it's salvation from the Lord because of his mercy and grace that he's provided through Jesus. Because he loves you. Because he's designed the circumstances for you to grow from them. Not to beat you down, to destroy you but to cause you to be made lower that he might lift you up as you trust in him and not yourself. Whenever you seek to fall and follow yourself and your own ideas, then you're going to walk along a cliff that sooner or later you're going to fall off because the winds will blow and if God hasn't told you to be there, then his hand will not hold you up and you will find yourself without his protection. But, but, when you do, Follow after the Lord, hard pressed to do as he says, as Psalms 3 says, then we know that God is our shield and our protector. We know that God is our salvation. We know that God is our deliverance, as he will set those that accuse you to say, where is your God, finding out that that is his way of bringing salvation to even your accusers, that they may say, wow, look at him we thought he was not of god and surely a god is in this place and in him so let us find what he has that we too might find that salvation comes from the lord when all these things have occurred then you can be the instrument like david was to tell someone else what god has done for you in the midst of not only psalms and your devotions but in the midst of your life as you go through it today, as God delivers you in every way from those that accuse you, from anything you do and anything you say, because He will be your salvation as you seek Him, as you walk with Him, and as you talk with Him today.